हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू ईपीजी पाठशाला आई एम डॉक्टर काजल जिंदल फ्रॉम यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ दिल्ली टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट द मॉड्यूल कैपेसिटेंस वोल्टेज कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स फ्रॉम द पेपर कैरेक्टराइजेशन ऑफ मटेरियल्स वन सो स्टूडेंट्स लेट अस सी व्हाट वी आर गोइंग टू लर्न इन दिस मॉड्यूल in this module the capacitance voltage characteristics of metal oxide semiconductor devices are discussed also low frequency capacitance voltage profile of metal oxide semiconductor data's mos structure is studied and different regions obtained by sweeping the gate voltages are explained in this module the quantitative expression of high frequency capacitance is obtained as a function of surface potential also charge distribution in n type mos is explained in different regions now coming on to cv profiling CV profiling is also known as capacitance voltage measurement technique and it is employed for characterization of semiconductor based resources as well as devices and for the physical parameters extraction fundamental principle underlying the capacitance voltage measurement involves applying a variable voltage to a metal insulator semiconductor also known as mis or to a short key junction and then measuring the junction capacitance in order to derive the relative information of duts that is device under test physical properties the correlation between the measured capacitance and the applied voltage is utilized a capacitance voltage testing setup has numerous significant merits that mark it a precious platform and an essential device and an essential device in the field of ics charges integrated circuit industry and it currently has a great use in the field of photovoltaics it is the most efficient electrical measurement system in order to collect materials and devices information moreover it is very easy to handle fast performing also it can be easily adjusted for use in various kinds of investigations in comparison to different characterization techniques this analysis system is quite cheap through this measurement system multiple analysis can be performed like profile of doping average doping concentration as well as lifetime of carrier capacitance voltage measurement result can tell about the thickness of oxide the charges of oxide and contamination from mobile ions and interfacial trap density in wafer processing these measurements are usually carried out after every important fabrication step such as gate dielectric and polysilicon deposition metallization etc eventually results give information of how the device is affected by the various processing parameters and chemicals cv measurement is again utilized in testing of finished devices in order 
to determine other parameters such as threshold voltage or to model final product performance. Let us now discuss the capacitance voltage profile curves. In metal oxide semiconductor device, two capacitances are considered. One is the static capacitance and other is the differential capacitance. Static capacitance can be defined by the equation C stat is equal to QT divided by VG. Here, QT denotes the capacitor plate's total charge density and VG denotes the voltage biasing which is applied to the capacitor. Differential capacitance is more significant which is defined by the equation C equals to dQt by dVg and it determines the rate of change of the total charge density with respect to voltage. In this discussion, the term capacitance will be referred to as small signal metal oxide semiconductor differential capacitance. Some related formulas and the theory based derivations are, will be shown further on in the presentation. Ideally, when there are no interface traps, oxide charge of work function difference in metal insulator semiconductor structure total capacitance per unit area is equivalent to the series combination of the oxide capacitance and silicon capacitance as 1 by C equals 1 by Cs that is Cs a function of psi s plus C, 1 by C ox. By applying low alternating voltage that is a sinusoidal wave in a steady state system, measurement of capacitance can be done as a function of gate biasing. Small signal range is selected in order to conduct the measurement. What it means that exerted AC voltage amplitude is sufficiently less to achieve linear response of AC current to AC voltage. Some known ideal effects such as interface traps and oxide charges have an impact on the small signal range as they influence the velocity of admittance change of metal oxide semiconductor capacitor with gate bias. We will next study the capacitance voltage profile at low frequency. In MOS structure, low frequency that is LF, differential capacitance per unit area as a surface potential function can be obtained when minor charge carriers are capable enough to follow the AC gate voltage and bias voltage ramp for each bias voltage value for deriving the analytical formula for LF capacitance voltage consider the device to be thermally equilibrated as well as the concentration of dopant impurity to be uniform in silicon thus one dimensional space potential as well as electric field can be obtained by solving Poisson's equation whereas Gauss law is used to compute surface charge per unit area at the interface. The electric field is given by F of S is equal to sine of UB minus US 
into kt by q times lambda i into f of us ub where f of us ub is equal to within the brackets square root of 2 times within the brackets ub minus us into sine hyperbolic of ub minus within the brackets cos ub minus cos hyperbolic us both the brackets close f us ub is the electric field with no dimensions lambda i is equal to device length for intrinsic silicon ub is equal to the bulk potential and us is the surface potential bulk and surface potential are defined as ub is equal to ef minus ei divided by q us is equal to ef minus ei at the surface divided by q surface charge density can be evaluated using gauss law as follows qs is equal to kt by q into epsilon s by lambda i sin of ub minus us into f of us ub the differential capacitance of surface is defined as cs is equal to minus q by kt into delta of qs by delta of us now derivating the above equation for qs with respect to us and substituting in the expression for differential capacitance of surface we will obtain the final formula for cs that is differential capacitance of surface at low frequencies as cs is equal to minus of sin of ub minus us into epsilon s by lambda i into sin hyperbolic of us minus sin hyperbolic of ub divided by f of us u theoretical low frequency cv curve is represented in the figure by sweeping the gate voltage different regions of cv curve can be obtained considering a p type silicon wafer the first region is said to be accumulation region this is obtained for negative gate bias when negative gate biasing becomes very large whole charge density at the surface of silicon gives rise to a large differential capacitance cs such that the total differential capacitance of the mos structure is roughly equivalent to the oxide capacitance per unit area that is c ox on the other hand for less negative gate bias voltages the whole charge density at the silicon surface decreases which leads to smaller value of cs flat band point is a point at which gate biasing eventually becomes equivalent to zero when small positive value of gate voltage is applied then holes get repelled from the surface of silicon leading to the formation of a depletion region of ionized dopants the depletion region is also termed as depletion layer the depletion layer becomes white when more positive biasing is applied thereby making cs smaller therefore we have stated that the total capacitance of the mis structure decreases with increasing gauge biasing the whole density of the surface declines whereas the electron density rises the point when these densities attain the same value 
is known as inversion onset. Once the surface density of electron exceeds the surface density of holes, electron inversion layer is produced. When the gate bias becomes more positive, differential capacitance Cs increases continuously till it becomes compatible and then subsequently exceeds the oxide capacitance per unit area that is COX. Therefore, we can say total capacitance C of the metal insulator semiconductor structure approaches COX asymptotically. Let us now calculate the capacitance voltage profile at higher frequency. This section presents the quantitative expression of the high frequency capacitance as a function of surface potential. When the frequency is high, then minor charge carriers do not follow AC gate voltage. Instead, they follow the changes in gate bias. Main difference in low frequency and high frequency capacitance voltage curve can be noticed in the inversion regions that is weak and strong. Once the major and minor charge carrier concentrations are equal, a hypothesis is formulated such that the application of gate bias in equilibrium condition keeps the total amount of minority charge carriers fixed and this does not change even on applying AC voltage. Additionally, spatial rearrangement of inversion layer is considered that is widening and narrowing of the inversion layer happens in response to the AC gate voltage. Computation of high frequency capacitance can be carried out in a manner similar to the one utilized for the low frequency case. That is, Cs is equal to 2 times Cfbs into within the brackets 1 minus e raised to power minus Vso plus small ni by Na whole square plus within the brackets E V S O minus 1 into delta by 1 plus delta plus 1 brackets close into F inverse of V S O mu B, where delta is equal to F of V S O U B divided by E raised to power V S O into within the brackets the integral going from 0 to V S O E raised to power V S minus e raised to power minus v s minus 2 times v s divided by f cube of v s u b into d v minus 1. Even though the equation as mentioned in the previous slide can be used to obtain accurate results, linear approximation can be carried out while considering minority charge redistribution. The results obtained with this approximation only deviate by approximately 1.5% from the actual value of capacitance. This approximation considers the capacitance from as calculated in the previous slide to be independent of the gate bias after a certain value of band bending which is denoted as Vm which is also termed as the match point. The approximation error is greatly reduced at the match point due to the capacitance at this point. The approximate values of capacitance for peak type and n type are computed using the following formulas respectively. Cs is equal to 1 by square root of 2 into Cfbs into within the brackets 
1 minus e raised to power vso into within the brackets vso minus 1 plus e raised to power minus vso brackets close raised to power minus 1 by 2. Cs can be simplified to be 1 by square root of 2 cfbs into within the brackets e raised to power vso minus 1 into within the brackets minus of vso minus 1 plus e raised to power vso brackets close raised to power minus 1 by 2. A suitable approximation for the band bending match point is Vm is equal to 2.10 Ub plus 1.33. High frequency capacitance voltage profile curves are fundamental for MOS structure measurements. The use of high frequency and low frequency capacitance techniques, CV profiling, can be used to determine the interfacial trap density as well as other physical parameters. However, the high frequency capacitance voltage profile curve judges acquired experimentally is the only good approximation of the device through CV curve throughout the biasing range. After approaching flat band region, the majority charge carrier density decreases sensibly yielding the more rapid capture in addition to shorter trap constants at the interface. For the employed measurement frequencies, interface traps follow the AC gate voltage over a certain range of gate bias, thus restricting the band gap energies over which the interface trap level density can be extracted via high frequency CV profiling technique. The deviation of 1 MHz CV curve from ideal high frequency plot can be attributed to the strong capacitive response of interfacial traps as flat band regime is reached, resulting in small values of the apparent interface trap density being estimated. Thus, as flat band regime is approached, measured 1 MHz capacitance red rapidly follows CX in comparison to the actual high frequency capacitance. The fast variations in capacitance with gauge bias impacts the slope and diminishes the stretch out and resulting in lower estimations of interface trap level density via any procedure involving high frequency CV profiling. The deviations at 1 MHz have been found to be below 2% in the region from flat band to strong accumulation. We will next study the CV characteristics of metal oxide semiconductor that is MOS structure. The MOS capacitor comprises a metal oxide semiconductor structure which is shown in the figure. It shows a semiconductor substrate which is having a thin oxide layer and metal contacts which is described as the gate. Second metallic layer is to create the ohmic contact to the semiconductor back, which is known as the bulk contact. The structure with P-type substrate is termed as N-type MOS or N-MOS capacitor since the inversion layer contains electrons. To appreciate the various biasing modes of a MOS capacitor, let us consider three bias voltages. A less than flat band voltage VFP, B greater than flat band and smaller than threshold voltage VT and C larger than VT with the bias regions termed as accumulation, depletion and inversion operation mode respectively. 
all these modes and the charge distributions are provided in figure 3. As can be seen in the figure, accumulation takes place for negative voltages and the negatively biased gate draws holes from the substrate towards oxide semiconductor interface. Depletion takes place in positive biased voltages. Positively biased gate repels holes into the substrate, thus depleting the interface of mobile charge carriers and a negative charge due to ionized acceptor ions develops in the space charge region. The flat band voltage VFB is defined as the voltage which is separating accumulation and depression regions. Inversion takes place for voltages larger than threshold voltage. In inversion regime, a layer of negative charge develops at oxide semiconductor interface besides a depression layer. Inversion layer develops because of the minority carriers drawn towards the interface by a positively biased gate. Figure 4 shows the energy band structure of NMOS capacitor which is operating in inversion regime. The oxide has been shown as a semiconductor having a large band gap. Therefore, it obstructs the carrier flow between the gate and the semiconductor. Band bending occurs in consistency with the incidence of the depletion layer. At semiconductor oxide interface, permeable lies near the conduction band, indicating the high density of electrons. Thus, we have studied that there are different operation modes of an MOS structure, flat band, depletion, inversion and accumulation. Flat band is the condition of no charge in semiconductor and a flat energy band. Surface depletion takes place when holes are repelled by the positively biased gate. A higher positive bias draws electrons which are minority carriers to the surface and forms inversion layer. With negative bias, the gate draws holes from substrate to its surface causing accumulation. Let us next discuss about the flat band diagram. Flat band signifies flat energy band structure in semiconductors implying that no charge is present within the semiconductor. The flat band for aluminum silicon dioxide, silicon that is ALSiO2Si, MOS is given in figure 5. The voltage VFB needs to be applied to get the flat band diagram. Work function of gate Fn, electron affinity of oxide, C oxide, and silicon and the band gap of silicon Eg are also indicated in the figure. The flat band voltage is obtained when the applied gate voltage matches the difference in work functions of gate and the semiconductor. By applying low voltage to a metal, its valence band edge may be shifted away from Fermi level and holes they are pushed away by the gate decreasing the carrier density and lowering the capacitance which can be seen as the valley in the middle of figure. Coming on to inversion at large gate bias, the conduction band approaches Fermi energy level, filling the surface by electrons in inversion layer or end channel at semiconductor oxide boundary. This causes increase in the capacitance which can be seen in the figure. Let's now understand accumulation. The negative gate source bias forms a p-channel at the surface of end region which is similar to the case of end channel although it is having opposite charge and voltage polarities. The increased hole density results in increased capacitance which is observed in figure. So students, 
let us now summarize what we have learned in this module. In this module, the capacitance voltage characteristics of metal oxide semiconductor devices were discussed. Also, low frequency CV profile of MOS structure was studied and different regions obtained by sweeping the gate voltages were explained. The quantitative expression of high frequency capacitance was obtained as a function of surface potential. Also, charge distribution in M-type MOS was explained in different regions. Thank you students for your attention.